Hi guys, and welcome back to another demo with Man and Machine. I'm Francisco Perez-Smith, mechanical engineer and FEA warrior. Today, we're going to continue our series on NAS Train NCAD. In the last episode, we had a look at linear static analysis. This time, we're going to be having a look at its bigger, badder brother, nonlinear static. Now often, linear static analysis is enough of the kind of problems you're looking at. A metal stressed below its yield point with simple boundary conditions and small deflections. But what if these conditions can't be met? In that case, you'll need something a little more powerful. Enter nonlinear static analysis. Just like linear static, nonlinear static analysis is typically used to predict how a design behaves under load. The usual results sought after are things like stress, strain, and deflection. Nonlinear static is one of the selling points of NAS Train NCAD, and at any rate, it isn't available in the native inventor stress analysis tool. It's very robust and powerful, and accordingly very painful to compute. However, for this price, it overcomes many of the limitations that come with linear static analysis. For example, it can handle large deflections and rotations, changing loads, changing boundary conditions, changing material properties like strain hardening and thermal softening, plastic deformation, and a few other things. We can see here in a bit better detail what's involved. Again, the assumptions and limitations are all there in the name. By virtue of being nonlinear, materials are allowed to behave linearly and or nonlinearly, so things like plastics, rubbers, ceramics, and composites. Materials can behave elastically and or plastically. Again, this is your squishy materials, but also metals and materials push beyond their yield points. Uh, deflections and rotations can be large, and boundary conditions can change. This means that they uh, can depend on the load application, like two faces coming into contact with one another when they weren't previously touching. It's also static, meaning that the load is applied slowly and consistently, and there is no inertia in the material, so things like momentum are considered. All right, enough of the theory. Let's have a practical look at nonlinear static analysis in Autodesk NAS training CAD. In this example, we're interested to see how the sheet metal footing is going to respond when subjected to a 10,000 newton load acting up on this lip here. When we do our analysis, we're going to fix this lower face, but we're going to subject a 10,000 newton load onto this face here. Notice that these faces have been split away from the rest of the lip. This is to more accurately depict how the force is going to be distributed while it's being jacked. Now, because 10,000 newtons is going to be more than enough to push this metal beyond its yield point, uh, we're going to have to use nonlinear statics in order to solve it. So to get started, we'll go over to Environments and go to Autodesk NAS Training CAD. The default study type is linear static. We're going to go ahead and right click that, click edit, and we'll change it from linear static to nonlinear static and click OK. Next, what we're going to do is further set up the nonlinear study by right clicking underneath the subcase here. And we're going to enable intermediate outputs. Because nonlinear problems are solved over many iterations, we might be interested to see how the design is behaving under 50% load or 75% load. These, by enabling these intermediate outputs, we're able to see all of those intermediate results. Next, what we're going to do is make sure that our materials are properly set up. Now, if you notice here, it's brought over the mild steel configuration from our original model. However, if we look into it, we can see that no nonlinear properties have been set up for the model. So we're going to go ahead and click nonlinear. And here, we're going to enable elastoplastic or bilinear. Now, these are very, very heavily dependent on your material properties charts, so you'll probably have to contact your supplier for the right values, but I've used these values for our mild steel. And we'll click OK. From there, it's very much as it was with the linear static. So we're going to say, place a constraint on the lower face, and we are going to place a load normal to the surfaces. So we'll click the two surfaces we split out, and we'll put a negative 10,000 Newton force on it. By clicking total force, we ensure that the total force that's distributed across the two faces is negative 10,000. If we didn't keep this ticked, then it would be negative 20,000. We'll click these little glasses to see if our load is correctly placed. That looks good. And then we're going to click OK. An interesting note before we continue is that the force is defined as normal to these surfaces. As the nonlinear analysis goes on, every intermediate step will change the angle of uh, this lip here, which will change the force vector. Okay. Next, all we need to do is create a mesh. 
And then I believe we are ready to solve. We'll go ahead and click run. Our solution is now complete. Because we enabled intermediate results, we are able to see how the design responded at various stages of the loading. So at 10% of the loading, we saw 121 meg 131 megapascals. This isn't enough to push the metal over yield. However, if we go to load 1.0, or the total loading, we'll see that the total stress in these corners, the peak stress, is 780.1 megapascals. This is well beyond the yield point of mild steel, and we would see some plastic deformation here. We can also see the total displacement that would result, and we'd see a 4.75 millimeter increase in elevation here. We can see it very clearly when we go and click deformed. So nonlinear statics has revealed that this design would fail, at least plastically, under this 10,000 Newton load. Okay guys, that was a simple example of how to use nonlinear static analysis in Autodesk NAS training CAD. As always, like and subscribe if you'd like to learn more, and be sure to tune in for the rest of our series on FEA. Thanks for watching and happy engineering!